When I was seven, I got lost in a chicken shop. <laughs> I ordered my food, I turned around, and my mum wasn't there. To be fair to my mum, she probably told me a hundred times that she was going to quickly go and get some cash from a local ATM, but my mind must have been somewhere else. And so for the first time in my entire life, I was left in a shop by myself. So I did what any sensible seven-year-old would do when they've been left alone. <laughs> I left the shop and I went out looking for my mum. As soon as I stepped outside, I very quickly realised that there was no way I was going to find my mum because the streets were too busy. So I moved to plan B. I hopped onto the bus, knocked on my neighbour's door, and with a few tears <laughs> rolling down my eyes, I asked if I could borrow their phone to call my mum because I was lost. Why have I decided to share that story with you today? Not just to remind you to never leave a seven-year-old alone in a chicken shop, but more importantly to highlight the power of community. At seven years old, I felt confident enough to get on a bus, travel across town, knock on my neighbour's door, and know with certainty that they would help me find my mum. For some reason, I don't know if a seven-year-old me today would do the same thing. 14 years later, and society feels a lot more divided. Communities feel a lot less united, and people feel a lot more alone. And this isn't just my opinion. According to the Department for Culture, Media and Sports, around 47% of adults in England experienced increased loneliness between April 2019 to March 2020. This was before the first lockdown. So you can only imagine how that number has increased since. In the world that we're living in today, with more people working from home, with more students studying online, with more people becoming rooted in their local areas, should there be a greater emphasis on localism? In this talk, I'm going to be sharing three case studies, three experiences, three stories that explain why I believe we need to create, bring back and invest in our local communities. When I think about community, I think about the community centre I went to as a child after school in my local area of South or West London. Every single young person from my estate, from different schools, different year groups, different cultural and ethnic backgrounds, would come to this community centre to compete, to collaborate, but more importantly, to create lifelong memories. The first time I scored a goal through the keeper's legs. The first time I whitewashed someone in a game of table tennis. The first time I lost a game of pool by putting in the black ball with the white ball. All of those memories were founded at the community centre. But more than memories, the community centre was also a place that facilitated personal growth. Teamwork, leadership, emotional intelligence, Conflict resolution every now and then. Those were some of the skills we learnt during some, of the during some of the most formative years of our lives. The youth workers that supervised us were young, relatable, energetic, and many of them came from the local community. The community centre also helped me feel a greater sense of belonging in my local area. That precious moment when you're walking home from school and a young person that you met the week before at the community centre looks at you from across the road and does this. I call it the recognition nod. And to this day, there isn't an equivalent gesture that can make me feel more safe and at home. Despite all of these benefits, the last 10 years has seen community centres shut down across the country. Analysis by the YMCA youth charity found that local government spending on youth services dropped from £1.4 billion in 2010 to just under £429 million in 2018, resulting in the loss of 750 youth centres in England and Wales. The community centre was the beating heart of my local area. It was a space for everyone. The young person in need of a friend. The teenager in need of a job the parent in need of a safe space for their children to play whilst they were usually at work. So takeaway message number one is that we need to create, 
bring back and invest in our local community centres. Moving on to case study number two. Not all readers are leaders, but all leaders are readers. This quote was plastered on the wall on my first day of work at Acton Library. Not to make too many LSE students jealous, but yes, when I was 16, I managed to land a job as a librarian. <laughs> and the most important skill that I developed during my time as a librarian was the skill of empathy. And there's one particular story that I feel like best captures that, that, that lesson for me, and I'd love to share it with you today. So at the library I worked at, we had the type of computers where you had to have headphones to listen to audio and music. And I remember every single week working at the library and walking past a children's computer and always seeing this one boy watching BBC Bite Size videos on the computer. Every single week he would be watching BBC Bite Size videos, but he would never have headphones on. He would always be watching these videos, just reading the subtitles. Eventually, after seeing this for a few weeks, I realised that the boy just didn't own a pair of headphones. So on my lunch break, I went out and I bought a cheap pair of headphones from the local high street. One week later, the boy's mum asked to see me. And when I came out to greet his mother, she gave me a really big hug. She gave me a gift and she said thank you for buying her son a pair of headphones. And that experience basically taught me two things. Firstly, it taught me that one small change for you can make a world of a difference to someone else. And number two, it taught me that at the heart of community is consistency. When you are a part of a community, because of your consistent exposure to people within that community, you are able to see things that other people can't see. It was only because I was at the library every single week that I was able to identify that specific resource gap that existed and try my best to help address it. Despite the enormous value that libraries provide society, especially to people who are most disadvantaged, the people who are homeless, people who are unemployed, people, young people who come from low income households. Over 800 public libraries have closed in Britain since 2010. It's important to remember that libraries are not leisure centres. For many, many people, they represent a lifeline. To study, to think, to read, everybody deserves an environment that facilitates those three basic needs. So my takeaway message number two is that we need to create, we need to bring back and we need to invest in our local libraries. In June 2017, a fire broke out in a tower block in West London, tragically causing 72 lives to be lost. A few days after the Grenfell fire tragedy, a few friends and I went to go and volunteer and help out in any way we could. When we got off at Latimer Road station, it felt like, a, like an earthquake had erupted in the middle of West London, destabilising everything. Thousands of people were on the streets, protesting, grieving, and working together to provide a humanitarian response for the survivors of the fire. People were giving donations. Neighbours were creating makeshift memorials. Restaurants were offering free food. Faith groups were providing direct support to families of victims. In my entire life, I have never seen people come together in such a way. And at the heart of this extraordinary response was the community, was the local community in North Kensington. It was the local community in North Kensington, not the government, who looked after the needs of survivors. And it continues to be the local community who are fighting for justice today by campaigning to make buildings safe across the country. If you need evidence, if you need proof, if you need an example that, that highlights how effective local communities are at addressing local problems with local solutions, I can't think of a better example than the community response at, Grenfell, at the Grenfell Fire. Of course, primary responsibility is on the government to provide critical resources to local communities, 
but one thing that was made clear in the days, weeks, months and now years that followed the Grenfell Fire tragedy is that when communities come together, there isn't a transformational force that compares. So takeaway message number three is that we need to invest in our local community by teaching, learning and being inspired by other local communities. After finishing my first year of university, I came home with an intention to give back to a community that had given me so much. One and a half years later, that intention of giving back has evolved into my work at Team Upside. Team Upside is a youth-led community organisation based in Ealing, West London, which is designed to tackle opportunity and resource gaps for young people in socio-economically disadvantaged areas of the UK. At Team Upside, we have an inspiring committee of seven people and we have a network of over 100 volunteers. In 2020, we launched five digital initiatives to support young people's learning during the pandemic, including a podcast, um, an inspiration from history series and a virtual book club. Right now, we are providing free tuition to young people in our local community on a weekly basis to help address the educational gap that continues to increase every single day that this pandemic continues. As a community organisation, our work at Team Upside is based on one key principle. Local problems are most effectively addressed by local actors with local solutions. Team Upside's long-term mission is to facilitate the creation of a network of community organisations across the UK and hopefully across the world. Community is a broad concept and it doesn't have a simple definition. It can be a group of people that are united based on their shared passions, their shared principles, or their shared physical proximity. In all of its different forms, there's no denying that community makes up the social fabric of society. And the power of community to create positive social change is something that Team Upside sincerely believes in. If there is anything I want to leave with you today, it's three questions for you to ask yourself. Question number one, what communities am I a part of? A helpful heuristic that you can use to help answer this question is to think about who shares your three Ps, your passions, your principles, and your physical proximity. Question number two, what problems exist within those communities? 65% of the children that live in my local estate come from the highest quintile of deprivation within the country. Information, opportunity and mentorship gaps are the structural problems that exist within my, local, within my local community. Question number three, what steps can be taken to address that problem? Team Upside attempts to address those problems at a grassroots level by creating educational online content, delivering school workshops and organising community projects. During the pandemic where social distancing makes it a lot more difficult and a lot more challenging to create strong local communities, I, I really encourage you to leverage technology, whether it be social media platforms like Instagram or Clubhouse or video conferencing platforms like Zoom or Google Meets. Really use these platforms to open up a dialogue with people within your local community and to work together to think of local solutions to local problems. In all of our attempts to change the world, let's not forget about the worlds that we're already a part of and let's remember to invest in our local communities with our time, our energy and our capital. Thank you for listening.